we now have two presentations. Both presentations will be made by Haggers, but the first introduction is uh, Tom Carmichael. Ago, I was asked for an action photo of this year's winner of the Perry Lewis Kershaw Memorial Trophy. Something might happen there in a moment. Uh, this isn't as easy as it is usual, this, this usually, because it's not a player who's won this, but our scorer and fixture secretary, two vital and rather unglamorous positions. Here's Robin Burns, and he's known to everybody as Robin. Robin was a stubborn batsman for Blackheath Surrey, but his playing days were long gone when the much-missed Charles Noakes recruited him to score for us in 1994. Then, two years later, Charles informed him that he should be our fixture secretary. And Charles had a way of making people feel that they were needed. Robbie set about improving our list, and it was very much to his credit that we now have a full and attractive set of fixtures at a time when Sunday-friendly cricket is said to be dying. As a scorer, Robbie gets on quietly with his task, although it's always best not to ask him to score in the middle of an over, and certainly don't block Robbie's view. He remains unseduced by computerised scoring, but he maintains an immaculate and error-free scoring sheet. He's very much in demand. It's a case of have coloured pens, will travel. In addition to scoring a good number of our games, Robbie scores for Blackheath, he scores for the MCC, for Charterhouse Friars, for the club cricket conference, for Surrey junior and senior sides, and even junior international matches, amongst many others. Not content with this, in the winter, Robbie trains scorers. I, I have a feeling, Robbie, we should have done this many years ago. Our winner today is Robbie Burns. <laughs> is by Katie Rowe. Well, it, it's absolutely wonderful to be here. And this occasion is really, really special because it is the 21st year of the Don Rowan Trophy. Now, I set up the Don Rowan Trophy and some of you here may remember him. He was a very loyal, very committed member of the society. And Bill Allen, who is here, is responsible for the trophy because after Don died, I got in touch with Bill. I said, Bill, I want to set up something that would contribute to cricket in Don's memory. And he talked to Chris Hall, the coach of Surrey, and they came up with a suggestion of an annual trophy that would be given for enthusiasm and support to the game, to the school that, it, that it was part of their education to school program. And it really developed from there. And then Chris, some years ago, came back and he said, now Casey, you know, we're developing really education and working with schools with special needs. And he said, I know that because of your interest in that area, how would you feel if we actually made the trophy to be awarded to the school that had shown the most enthusiasm for cricket, that was a school for special needs in Surrey? So I said, it's wonderful. And do you know something? It's been the most wonderful privilege for me to see how it has developed. And I'm enormously grateful to the Cricket Society, to Surrey, the Surrey Cricket Trust. It's wonderful collaboration that has developed it to this stage. Now, this year, the 21st year, we have a winner that I think really epitomizes everything that the, that the, that the trophy 
wants to achieve. And this Michael Tippett School have won, this is their second time of winning the trophy. And to see really the commitment and what they've done really says all and everything what we all feel about this wonderful game. So I'm going to read the citation which has been said as to why they have won the trophy for the second time. The school has been a real supporter of Surrey's disability cricket programme over a number of years now. And it's got such super support from the internal sports staff, teachers at the school, their students. And they're really benefiting from a regular session of cricket each week, they do it each week with their Surrey coach. They also attend Surrey-wide competitions during the school year, which go a long way to show how much cricket has an impact on the school and what it does as a whole. And I'm really pleased, because I'm chatting to them, and chatting them for the second time, that Sebastian and Ramona are here from the school to accept the trophy. All I can say to you all is thank you all so much for your support to this trophy and to the work of Surrey, because we can do no more than actually encourage love and enthusiasm in young people, including including people with special needs. So thank you so very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Myself and Ramona would like to uh, thank you for hosting us and uh, giving us this privilege to be among you. We'd like to pass the message from our students who are very keen cricket players. They do come to our session on a weekly basis and they ask what we're going to do today, what new things we're going to learn. Let me quote my, one of the students who came to me quite recently and said, Sebastian, listen, we went to the park and played the cricket with the parents. I know, what did you do? We played the batting and the catching. And that what they enjoy all together. So I think we are a little seed growing into the plant of the majestic garden of the Cricket Society. And thank you very much for having us amongst you. The, um, cricket in a boys game, which obviously wasn't, um, wasn't really open for, for girls when I was playing back in the day. So thank you Huntingdonshire Cricket. I think a lot of other counties get the credit for me, Ken and Hampshire, but actually it's Huntingdonshire who I can, well, I certainly can't thank enough. Um, I think to my family, I certainly wouldn't be here without my family. Um, but also, I think without the game, the ECB have done a huge amount um, for women's cricket. I think anyone who's covered or seen the women's cricket over the last few years, I think you've seen how far it's come. I made my debut 20 years ago. I paid for my blazer. I wore a skirt with long socks. No, it wasn't great, trust me. Um, no, it wasn't great to field in. Um, and, uh, you know, I've watched the game evolve over that 20 years to now the current team. And I, in my last two years as a professional cricketer, something that I never thought would happen um, as a girl growing up, a 13 year old girl in Huntingdonshire. So I'm incredibly proud of where the game's at. Um, there's so, so much scope for the game to grow, uh, which is even more exciting, and um, I look forward to being involved, hopefully in a different capacity in the next few years. But thank you very much for this award. I can't thank you enough, and thank you everyone, and thank you for inviting me today. Thank you. one competition or one format of the game, 
he had an outstanding season in all three formats. With the bat, this was typified by a spell in early June when he scored 772 runs in five consecutive innings at an average of 258. This included consecutive innings of 257 not out, a career best, and 247 in the county championship. With the ball, he began with a bang, taking seven first class wickets before the end of March, including a season's best analysis of 5 for 43. Thereafter, his wickets came steadily in all competitions. Sammy's performances held Nottinghamshire to promotion from the second division of the county championship, to the winners' rostrum in the 50 over competition, and again to that same winners' rostrum in the T20 competition, in the final of which he was named man of the match for his innings of 64. His achievements in the shorter form of the game were recognised when in October he captained the MCC side in the Hong Kong International Sixes and later played in domestic T20 competitions in both Bangladesh and New Zealand. Sammy can't be here today unfortunately to accept his award but we do have a message from him. Sammy, it's good to know that the people outside of Trent Bridge have recognised you for your own achievements. You've won the Cricket Society Award, the Outstanding All Round in County Cricket for your performances last year. Now, people are going to be sitting down for the lunch at the Avon right now watching this, and there are other, other winners that's going to be uh, sitting watching, including the leader all round in schools cricket, that's Andrew Bramley of the Leeds School in Cambridge. So, have you got any advice for Andrew and other young winners like him who are about, to, about how you can possibly make it to the very top? Well, so yeah, it's a great honour to win it. Um, but yeah, obviously, to, to play professional cricket, um, you obviously have to have a lot of skill um, and a lot of fun, I reckon. And you, you've got to make cricket um, one of your passions to play uh, at the top level um, and enjoy playing in front of big crowds. Um, and, I, and I kind of cherish that and, and look forward to playing in front of big crowds. Um, it kind of brings the best out of me. Um, but yeah, as I said, enjoy enjoy the game of cricket um, and enjoy whatever field you're in. Um, if you're a bat, or a bowler, an all rounder, um, enjoy taking wickets and scoring runs. Um, that's the way I look at it um, and putting on putting on a show for the for the crowd. And how important is it as a young player to work hard? Well, I'm massive. Um, there's there's no um, sort of shit of, of working hard and, and working on your game in, in all aspects. Um, and obviously the, the consistency that you'll get from, from how you train it will reflect in the middle. In the last season, just a word about that, it probably seems quite a long time ago now, but fantastic season all around, but obviously a fantastic season for yourself as well. Yeah, it was a great year. Um, we, we won't forget it. Um, yeah, obviously a lot of hard work went on during in the winter of 2016, um, where things didn't go right for us, um, but as a club and... We had, in my opinion, we had one of the best coaches going around to, to turn that around and collectively as a group we did that. Um, we knew we had to win a hard yards and that started in the winter and it's kicked on all the way through the, through the summer. So yeah, um, very, very pleased on that. You mentioned that you're proud to win the award, it's a very prestigious award, but uh, you know, what does it mean as a player to, to get accolades after you've put in the hard graft? It's very pleasing, uh, and and you, you feel reassured that you've you've put in the yards to, to win the award. And that's like I don't think you wouldn't go to into a marathon without doing the doing the hard yards. So yeah, it's the same for batting and bowling. You, you do the hard yards and the nets, and get your mental frame right, and and just try and enjoy the game when it happens. Thanks very much, Sonny. Thank you very much. has nurtured many famous sportsmen, including former England captain Freddie Brown. But not until this year has it provided the winner of the Wetherill Award for the leading school all-rounder of the year. We remedy that this year by making the award to Andrew Brownlee in honour of an outstanding season in which he scored just over 800 runs for the school at an average of 73 and took 25 wickets at an average of a little over 12. Andrew, who captained his school side, is described as a fast scoring right-handed batsman who bats at the top of the order. He made three centuries for the school in 2017, as well as playing in innings of 93 and 60 balls against Felstead in a T20 fixture. As a bowler, he bowls a waist swing with a well-disguised slower ball. Economical, even in T20 matches, his best performance of the season was nevertheless in a full-length game 
in which he took four for nine in 14 overs against Haleybury. His abilities have also been recognised outside the school game. Last summer he scored back-to-back -back centuries for Burwell in the East Anglian Premier League and represented both Cambridgeshire and North Ant Second Eleven in senior matches. For Cambridgeshire he scored 26 and 24 on debut against an attack that included Monty Panassar and Tom Brett. For the North Ants Academy, he played an innings of 174 in the semi-final of the National Under-17 competition and won a joint win winner's medal when the final of that event was unfortunately rained off. Andrew will still be at school for the coming summer, after which he hopes to gain experience playing in Australia before returning, all being well, to a full season next year with North Ants. Please welcome Andrew Brownlee to accept his award. promising young male cricketer is the potential to play for England. Three of our last four winners have progressed rapidly to the international side and this year's winner is tipped strongly to do likewise by many sound judges. Dan Lawrence was brought up on excellent batting tracks prepared by his father at Chingford Cricket Club. In 2015, aged just 17, he hit 161 in only his second first class game, the third youngest centurion ever in the county championship. Dan continued his outstanding progress and in 2017 hit 880 runs at 40 in Essex's County Championship winning side. He has also been successful in Essex's T20 side and to a lesser extent the 50 over side. He even found time to turn out on occasions for Chingford. His potential was recognised with a call up to the England Lions team last summer, together with selection for the Lions winter tours to Australia and West Indies. <coughs> Unfortunately, a broken finger cut the later tour short. Although Dan can't be here today, our past chairman, Bill Allen, will be presenting the award to him at Chelmsford early in the season. We do, however, have an advanced acceptance speech, and here it is. Alright, so it's rolling. It's just got to go in three, two, one, you ready? Hi guys, um, Dan Lawrence here. Um, just a massive thank you um, for giving me the award. It's a, um, it's a great honour. Um, I had a very enjoyable season last year and um, hopefully I've got much more and bigger things to come. Um, have a good day guys, sorry I can't make it. Thank you. Our next award, made on the recommendation of Claire Connor, is for the young female cricketer who showed the most promise during 2017. Sophie Eggleston is a left arm orthodox spinner renowned for her accuracy and economy. She plays her county cricket for Lancashire and last season finished as leading wicket taker in Division 1 of the Women's County Championship. Sophie was instrumental in Lancashire winning both the Women's County Championship and the T20 Cup last summer. On the last day of the County Championship, she tore through the Warwickshire batting lineup, taking 6 for 12, the performance that ultimately took them to championship victory. She made her debut for England in July 2016 against Pakistan impressing from the get-go. While she missed out on last year's World Cup due to exam commitments, those pesky A-levels, she finished 2017 on a high, helping England draw the Women's Ashes series out in Australia. At just 18, she's no doubt got a glittering career ahead of her. First up is England's tour to India, which commences this month, and in which she's expected to play a big role. To accept the award on Sophie's behalf, we're delighted to welcome her parents, Elaine and Paul Eccleston.
Thank you, Ty. Thank you. Our next award is for the best schoolboy fielder in England and is the first of two made on the recommendation of the English Schools Cricket Association. Elliot Goldthorpe, captain of the Yorkshire team and the Yorkshire under-15s, won the national finals beating Nottinghamshire. He captained the North Region at the Bunbury Festival and went on to play and captain in the best of North and Midlands against South West and London East. Elliot, of course, also played for his school's first 11 team, headed the batting averages last season and won the all-round award. For Yorkshire under-15s, Elliot starred with the ball, taking his wickets at below 14 a time. For Rawdon and School, his all-round hands were fully shown. He scored over a thousand runs at nearly 40, with eight fifties and a top score of 149. 49 wickets at 15 was his bowling return. He took 17 catches and claimed eight run-outs. His fielding, for which he gets this award, shone at all the levels at which he played. Elliot's main interest outside of cricket is football, and he currently plays at Academy Standard. He supports Tottenham Hotspur. Someone, Someone has to. And he's been to Wembley Stadium to watch them. He's currently studying hard, well, perhaps not today, working towards his GCSE exams. Please give a warm welcome to Elliot Goldthorpe. Society, my family, and Ken Lake especially. And it's good to bring it home to its rightful place in Yorkshire. So. <laughs> the second of our awards, made in conjunction with the English Schools Cricket Association, goes to Rishi Wajaratne as our chosen most outstanding under 16 schoolboy cricketer. Rishi was born in London, moved for a short time to Sri Lanka and then returned to England. He attended St Martins in Middlesex and is now a student at Harrow School, where notably last season he played for Harrow's first 11, including in the Lord's fixture against Eton. Rishi has a prolific record in schools cricket and has played for a variety of Middlesex age groups, from the under 9s and 10s to the under 19 county teams. Following selection for London and East in the Bunbury Festival at Stowe, Rishi's London and East team won the 50 over competition and were runners up in the T20. Rishi was awarded the ECB Best Batsman and MVP trophies and from there took part in the Loughborough three day competition. Rishi frequently reminisces that the Bunbury Festival was the best week of his life. Rishi ended the season representing Middlesex under 19s against Lancashire under 19s, not out of 35, having faced two first class bowlers. Rishi is something of a sporting all rounder with tennis, fives, and rackets to the fore. Please continue to put your cricket first, Rishi, and come and collect your award. Well, I'd just like to say how it's uh, such a privilege to uh, get this award and I'd um, like to thank the Cricket Society especially for, for letting me have this. Thank you.